Knowing your expense numbers to generate profit. Hi, this is Steve Hansen, co-founder of the Janitorial Store. Say, so, you know, uh, it's often that uh, many people don't know their expenses when they're trying to calculate if they're going to make a profit on an, on an account. And we really, we have to know these, we have to know these expense numbers. Uh, so that's what I'm going to cover today is uh, we're going to go through uh, various expense numbers that we should know. Uh, in order to uh, know if we're going to actually make a profit on the account or not, or or any particular job, in fact. So, um, to begin with, uh, we'll, we'll cover the FICA and Medicare. Now, this one here is where the employers and employees, they, they split this tax. And for both, the current Social Security and Medicare tax rates are 6.2% and 1.45%, respectively. So that's pretty straightforward, you know, so it makes it simple. Uh, this here, everybody pays the same amount. You know, so, uh, so if you look at each, uh, each party, they pay 7.65% uh, of their income. And for the uh, total FICA contribution of 15.3%. Uh, uh, so, you know, like I say, it's pretty, pretty clear. Um, you know, to calculate your FICA tax burden, uh, you can multiply your gross pay by 7.65%. So that's a pretty easy calculation. You know, for, for example, if, uh, let's say my labor uh, on this particular project was uh, $3,792.53. Uh, well, what, that's what I do is I take that, <coughs> excuse me, I take that number and multiply it by 0.0765%. So what that tells me is that uh, that tax burden would be $290.13. You know, again, I know people don't like, uh, you know, videos like this because we're talking numbers uh, and things like that and, and calculations and formulas. But I tell you, if you don't know this stuff, you might as well just stop doing what you're doing uh, because you have no clue that if you're even making a profit on any job that you're doing or an account. Uh, so that's why this stuff is important. You know, I, I keep on uh, uh, emphasizing that because it is. It's very, very important. You know, how can we accept or, or turn in a bid to any prospect if we don't know for a fact that we're going to make a profit on that account? So that's my argument with it. So, uh, so we're going to continue with this. So up next, we're going to talk about FUDA. You know, that's your federal unemployment. So we'll talk about that next. FUDA, uh, that's your uh, Federal Unemployment Tax Act, that's what that stands for. And uh, what it does is it requires employers to pay a tax of 6%, that's what the current rate is, uh, for, on the first $7,000 uh, $7, $7, of salary or wages you know, paid to each employee during the year. So that's what that's all about, and that's the calculation, uh, is uh, you know, 0.06%. Uh, now, everybody pays that amount, so that makes it, again, pretty easily for doing our calculations. But, you know, like any of these things that I'm going through, we want to go ahead and we want to check these numbers every year. Because, you know, they may go up or down depending on what, uh, you know, what the government does and so on and so forth. But for your FUTA, uh, the FUTA tax is uh, deposited with the IRS throughout the year. Uh, so make sure that you got that all set up. Uh, employers... They file a uh, file a form 940 to calculate their fruit tax for the previous calendar year. So you know, for example, uh, if again, if we have uh, wages uh, of uh, three thousand seven hundred ninety-two dollars and fifty-three cents, we would multiply that by 0 .006. That's six percent. Point zero zero six. That equals twenty-two dollars and seventy-six cents. So that's how we could calculate that. Again, you know. Uh, you know, put this put this information somewhere uh, to where you have your list of your expenses, and just review them every year uh, to make sure that you're you're still on track. Your percentages are the same, and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, it's, it'll get so much easier for you uh, once you understand how this is calculated and uh, where you're getting the information. But again, we we need this information so we can. Uh, Move forward uh, and know if that we're going to get a uh, make a make a profit on any job or account. Okay, so that's what you have. Uh, that's your your uh, your FUTA. Uh, that's your federal unemployment. And uh, now we'll move on to the next. 
Okay, let's keep moving forward here. Uh, what we're talking about now is we're going to talk about our, our SUDA. That's your state unemployment. Now, the SUDA tax are paid only for the first $7,000 of an employee's annual wages as of 2010. So that's, that's good to know. And uh, what you do is that uh, you calculate the amount of SUDA tax for the employee. You multiply the percent of the required SUDA tax by the employee's gross wages. So now the gross wages, uh, that means uh, any tips and compensations uh, or bonuses, okay? So for example, um, if your SUDA rate was 5.4% and the employee's wages are $400, uh, your SUDA tax for that employee is 5.4% of the $400 or $21.60. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but that's how, that's how you'd calculate that. So what you can do is you can always refer to your state's payroll tax instructions to find out the percentage of the employee's pay uh, that you're required to pay for, for SUDA tax. So that's where you can get that information. Uh, your rate uh, may vary uh, since states adjust the rate depending on how many valid unemployment claims uh, are filed by workers who have been laid off or dismissed. So it's very important that you don't have a lot of turnover because obviously if that happens, uh, obviously I think your rate's going to go up. So try to minimize the turnover, you know, keep, uh, keep happy employees uh, so you don't uh, pay higher rates. Uh, now, you can get the, the required uh, forms from your State Department of uh, Revenue or the Department of Labor. So that's what you can do there. So hopefully that helps you there about your, your, your SUDA, your state unemployment. Uh, like I say, now that rate's different for everybody. So we need to know what that is uh, so we can calculate our expenses uh, for any job or account that we're, that we're working on. So the next thing we're going to go to is we're going to talk about liability insurance. Okay, let's move on to liability insurance. So, you know, uh, liability insurance is usually a percentage of, of per $1,000 of payroll. Uh, generally, that's how it's calculated. Uh, you know, janitorial insurance isn't a specific policy you can buy. Uh, instead, uh, it's, it's a number of commercial uh, policies janitors may want to protect their business. Um, and, you know, each uh, policy covers a specific set of risks. So you want to keep that in mind and make sure that you have the proper coverage for your for your cleaning company. For example, you know the, you have a general liability. Uh, you know that pays uh, costs associated to uh, customer lawsuits. You know, so a small janitorial company, uh, you know, typically pay between uh, three hundred fifty to eight hundred dollars uh, per year for general liability insurance. Remember, that's just one portion, though. You know, that's just one one part of your insurance. Uh, if you own a small cleaning business, you may qualify for business owner's policy, or what they call it, a BP, a BOP. You know, so BOP is a, a bundled general liability and commercial uh, property damage uh, coverage. So often uh, you get a lower rate, uh, and you know the individual uh, then you know you'll get a, a lower rate because you're, you're bundling them, you know, rather than uh, what you might for for an individual policies or coverages. So keep that in mind. Uh, you know, generally a janitorial uh, business is typically pay between $750 to $1,300 for a business owner's policy, uh, a BOP. So, uh, something to think about. Um, you know, also, you know, your janitorial cost uh, ranges uh, from $375 to, to $3,500 per year. Now, again, it all depends on, pro it depends on the coverage that you're having. But, uh, you know, uh, generally you're looking at a, these small cleaning companies might pay between $750 and $1,300 per year uh, if they only require a business owner's policy. Um, but we already know that there, there's many other policies that we'll need as, as uh, cleaning business owners. Um, so, you know, that's the thing. And uh, in comparison, you know that the large uh, janitorial companies uh, that need additional coverage should expect to pay a heck of a lot more, you know, in, in fact, in several, several thousands of dollars per year. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, one thing, too, is that, you know, when we're looking at all this different coverage, uh, our janitorial uh, cost uh, can, can vary greatly. So if we're, let's say we're looking at the general, general liability insurance, and let's say we're having a coverage of $2 million dollars, well, the annual premiums could be anywhere from $375 to $800, okay? Uh, your commercial property insurance, uh, you know, and then you're going to have a coverage of, let's say, $10,000 to, uh, to $100,000. Uh, 
just for that policy, it may cost you another three hundred eighty dollars or a thousand dollars between three hundred eighty and a thousand dollars per year for that policy. Um, you know, then when you're looking at the the BPO or the BOP that we talked about earlier, you may have a two million dollar uh, coverage on it. That's going to cost you seven hundred fifty to thirteen hundred dollars per year. Um, then we also have to consider commercial auto insurance. Um, you know, something we have to look at. And let's say we have a million dollar coverage. Well, those those uh, rates are going to be somewhere around fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred dollars per year then for that policy. And obviously we got workman's compensation. Uh, let's say we have a five hundred thousand dollar policy on that, and uh, we're looking at fifteen hundred to thirty five hundred dollars per year for that for that coverage. And then uh, you know a lot of companies, uh, cleaning companies, will go ahead and they'll do an umbrella on their business. And, uh, you know, let's say they have a million dollars or two million or three million dollar uh, umbrella, you know, that can uh, cost you, you know, anywhere from, you know, four hundred to fifteen hundred dollars and more uh, for that umbrella. So those are all things to, to consider when you're thinking about your liability insurance. And, uh, you know, to help calculate that, again, like I say, it's generally, uh, you know, the uh, per thousand. But, uh, you know, you can always get with your agent and uh, talk to them and they can help you calculate exactly uh, what your number is, what your percent is. Uh, once you have that, again, like I say, always review that annually uh, and review it with your agent. Uh, because, you know, your premiums are, may go up or down every year depending on if you add coverage, take coverage away, or if you have claims or whatever. Uh, that's why, you know, just talk with your agent and uh, you know get that calculation so you know exactly what it is so you can enter that on uh, your bidding calculator uh, to know exactly uh, where you're at with it so we we can properly calculate the, the profit we're going to make on our on our job or account okay all right then uh, from here we're going to go on to workers compensation workers compensation well, we all know that workers' compensation is for our, uh, if an employee were to get hurt or injured on the job, they will help pay their medical bills. Uh, so that's what that's all about, you know. And your workers' compensation premiums are calculated according to how many or how employees are classified uh, with regards to the specific type of work they perform and the rate assigned to each employee classification. So what that means is that. Um, they, they get a number. So your, our cleaning workers, they have one number. I don't remember what that number is. Uh, that's the classification. And then our uh, office people, our clerical workers, they have a, another number. So that's what they're doing is that they're, they're classifying uh, each, each type of employee that we have. And they'll all have different rates. Uh, so uh, always keep that in mind. So you, you, you know that your cleaning workers will have a different rate than your office worker. Um, so, you know, the nice thing about this is if you have an existing workers' compensation policy, uh, those codes are listed on the declaration page. So, you know, look for that. Uh, if you, if you uh, do not already have, own a policy, then check with your National Council on Compensation Insurance or the NCCI. That's where you can just do a Google search uh, for NCCI, and you're going to be able to go ahead and search and try to find that classification uh, for, for cleaning workers. Uh, now they'll have, uh, they may have two different ones for cleaning workers such as commercial cleaners and residential cleaners, so keep that in mind. Um, and you know, uh, you might also uh, uh, check with uh, any agency that your state uh, uses for workers, workers comp and case, uh, work, workers comp <laughs> codes, uh, you know, to help them to determine the appropriate code that, you, that you're looking for. Uh, you know, in, some, in most states, the NCCI uh, determines the classification rate and the experience modifi modification factor, uh, also called MOD. So, you know, keep that in mind. You know, your experience, uh, your experience modifier is a numeric representation of your company's claim experience. Uh, so, you know, that's, you'll often hear that talked about, you know, when they talk about your, uh, uh, your, your experience. And, uh, and that's exactly what it is. So that's where, again, you want to make sure that you have no accidents whatsoever, uh, because if if you have uh, accidents, it's going to increase your mod rate. Uh, you just don't want that your experience rate. You don't you don't want that high number. Uh, so uh, keep that in mind. So 
you know, and uh, the, the mods are based on how your company compares to others in your industry with similar classified employees. So, you know, that's really kind of the drag because, you know, the cleaning industry, now you're compared to all other cleaning companies. Um, kind of, it's kind of a drag, but it is what it is. But that's why you want to make sure that you have a great training program, safety training, uh, and always, always uh, emphasize safety uh, uh, while working. Because, again, you know, we don't want any claims because it's going to affect our workers comp okay so you know then the you know the the, the average mod rate is set at uh, 0.100 uh, so employers with a uh, fewer or less uh, severe accidents uh, than average have a mod rate of less than 1.00 so this is exactly what I was just saying uh, that's why you want you don't want any accidents you know so what, uh, what you do then is you, you assign each of your employees one of these classification codes. Uh, if somebody fits uh, into uh, more than one code, then uh, speak to your insurance agent because they'll be able to help you with that uh, to determine you know, what the proper code for that employee is. Because uh, you may have some that, that you know, fit into a couple different classifications. So just uh, you know, get with your agent and uh, they'll help you uh, make sure you get the right codes and they'll help you break down exactly you know why you're paying X amount of dollars for for your workers comp uh, premium and so on and so forth uh, and they'll help you get that uh, that uh, set that that percentage that you want to know because you want to you want to know a dollar amount and you want to know a percentage on any of our expenses that we're calculating okay now something else that you want to think about you know there's three factors of workers compensation premiums uh, you have the size of the pay uh, the employers payroll because uh, remember it's all based off that uh, then you got your employee job classifications so you know if you got a, a, a larger uh, larger uh, cleaning service uh, commercial cleaning service um, well you, you may have you got your frontline cleaners you may have office personnel uh, you may have uh, salesmen you may have uh, warehouse people that are going you know so, you know con controlling the supplies and things in the warehouse so all these people are going to have different classifications. And then obviously you got your company's claims experience, you know, your mod rate. Again, you know, everything's going to come back to that. Yeah, you just don't, you know, you just want to make sure that uh, you provide the best training possible for, for safety and uh, uh, have zero claims. Uh, that's the best. So anyway, you know, when you talk about that, you, the calculation or the formula that you could use is actually, you know, payroll uh, per, per $100.00. Uh, times classification rate times experience modifier equals your premium. So when you're talking to your agent, you know, that's basically the formula that they're going to use to determine how much you're going to pay for uh, uh, workers' compensation. So that's what you want to do is you find that uh, premium rate for each uh, class uh, class code. And again, this information is listed in your policy uh, dis dis uh, uh, declaration page. Uh, or you can, uh, if you're renewing a policy, you can receive it at the end of the year. Um, you don't have, if you don't have an existing policy, just call your agent again, you know, because that's the thing, is uh, you can uh, talk to a number of different insurance companies to get workers' compensation. And in some, in some cases, uh, the state will actually have a, what they call a state insurance fund, and they'll handle uh, uh, workers' compensation. Uh, sometimes those aren't a bad deal. I remember in, uh, you know, in my first company, uh, we actually were going through the state insurance fund and uh, we would end up getting rebates every year because of zero accidents. You know, we just, uh, uh, we're just fortunate, you know, we're just, uh, uh, we're sticklers about training. Anybody that knows us knows that we, we train, train, train. But yeah, so, but that was really sweet to get, get, you know, here I'm paying the premium in, but yet I'm still getting something back uh, because, uh, because of what we're doing. Um, then, so what you'll do is that you know that these rates, uh, the rates represent a premium per hundred dollars of payroll. That's what that again. That's what that's based off of. You know, so for example, if your clerk or staff uh, is charged a rate of uh, one dollar and eight cents, you must pay a dollar eight cents in premiums for every one hundred dollars they earn in payroll. Okay. So, you know, you calculate the total annual uh, payroll for all your employees in each code, uh, then you divide each class uh, uh, class code's annual payroll by 100. Uh, so that's what you would do. You, you add them all up, divide it by 100, uh, or, um, 
Yeah, divide divide by 100. I lost my train of thought there. Uh, so, for example, if, if you had the clerical worker that uh, that earns $45,000 per year, uh, you know, uh, your new number is now 400, 450. So, you know, the multiplier, uh, the, the new number, you just multiply that new number by the class code premium. Uh, so, for example, let's say we're, we're talking uh, your clerical staff is earning $45,000. Uh, you're paying that $1.08 premium multiplier. You know, it costs you $486 per year. So what that ends up being is it's $450 50 times uh, $1.08 equals the, the, the four, uh, four, $486. So that's what that calculation is. You know, so then you, you, add, uh, you add the annual premiums to all the classes and this is your estimated uh, annual workers' compensation insurance cost. So that's how that all works. So, you know, and, and you know, sure you may not need to know all this stuff, but the thing to do is to work with your agent. You know, at least you understand it. You know, this video kind of uh, explained it to you. But still have that conversation with your agent. You know, have them explain exactly how do you guys calculate this? How do you calculate my workers' comp? You know, why am I paying this rate and and so on and so forth? Uh, that's what you're paying them for. So uh, use them uh, again because the bottom line is that we have to make sure that we're uh, we know what that percent is uh, for any job or any account that we're that we're uh, uh, doing a proposal on. Very important. That's the only way we're going to know how much profit we have uh, when it's all done and said. Okay, so that's uh, that's it for uh, workers' comp, and uh, next we're going to move on to overhead. Overhead. Well, you know when you talk about that uh, to different people, every ha everybody has their own uh, definition of what what should be an overhead and what's not an overhead. But you know uh, how we explain it is that it's just the ongoing cost of operating a business that does not generate a profit. So anything, anything, any of those items that uh, that don't generate a profit will put into overhead. So you know some of the examples for that is uh, you got your phone bill, you got your utility. You know your utilities. Uh, if you're, let's say you're working out of your home, uh, actually you you can be uh, leasing a space to your cleaning company for that office space in your home. So a portion of those utilities that you're paying. Uh, should be billed to your company, so it ends up being a percentage, you know, of whatever space you have uh, out of your home. Uh, so another thing is that any lease, uh, rent or lease payments that you're making, uh, insurance uh, and office supplies is another one. You know, administrative costs. So you want to remember about that. You know, uh, uniforms. So if you have uh, company uniforms, uh, you want to put that. Go ahead and put that in overhead. Uh, you got uh, equipment maintenance. So uh, you have upkeep of maintenance, uh, you know, and you're 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 going to have to re replace batteries and or uh, blades or or whatever it may be. You know, remember we can just put that in overhead because again, it's it's not uh, generating a profit for us. And then we also have our training. You know, all of the training that we do for our employees and uh, managers and, and entire entire team. You know, that's uh, again, uh, we can put that in overhead. Uh, so, you know, and, uh, you know, the rate's going to vary from company to company, you know, again, because a company that's, uh, that's working out of their home uh, will have much lower overhead than a company that's, uh, that's leasing a space, uh, uh, you know, an office and or a warehouse. So, you know, that's where the differences can be. But the, what you want to do is you want to take, uh, you want to take your list, create that list of all these items <coughs> that are, that are going to be in your overhead. Calculate the cost that you're spending on them. And now you, you should have all that because you should be keeping your receipts. So you should know what your costs are on all these things. And then total them all up. And once you have a total, uh, let's say the, the total is $60,000. Uh, then what you do is you go ahead and you divide that by your, by your yearly sales, your revenue. So for the example that I always give is, you know, okay, we, we got $60,000 uh, uh, in overhead. And it's uh, divided by our our annual sales of two hundred and twenty five thousand dollars, so that ends up being uh, you know twenty seven percent. So that's how you would calculate your overhead. Uh, and again, you want to take time. You know, just go ahead and uh, uh, make a list of what what those items are, um, and uh, you know calculate the pricing. Uh, you have to do it again. So. Uh, 
Uh, once you got it though, then uh, again, like I always say, is always review this, you know, every year. So we know that, okay, well, our overhead's still 20%, 27% or 14% or whatever it may be. Again, it's going to be different for everybody. But uh, make sure you do that. Uh, so up next, what we'll talk about is uh, we need to figure out our supply costs. So that's up next. Supplies. Well, you know, we definitely have to know how much we're spending in supplies. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> In, in any account or job that we're doing. So again, you know, it's uh, the, the best thing to do there. Uh, and, and, uh, well, and, and when we're talking about supplies, you know, we're, we're talking about cleaning chemicals, you know, uh, we're talking about mop heads, our dusters, our, our vacuum cleaners, you know, any of our supplies that we're using to perform the job. And uh, here's something I want to talk about is, uh, uh, you know, the supplies that we use are cleaning solutions. So, you know, the cleaning chemicals that we're purchasing that we, that we make into cleaning solutions, you have to, when you're, when you're calculating the price for that, you have to remember that uh, hopefully you're using dilutable product because that's where you're going to get more money for, for your, for your uh, or for more chemical for your investment. And so what I'm talking about is, let's say we're buying a glass cleaner and the glass cleaner comes in a quart bottle. Well, that quart bottle may cost us 35 bucks. And I know what you're saying, well, holy crap, I'd never pay $35 for a quart of glass cleaner. But you have to remember, it's a concentrate. So that means that that one quart will probably make us, what, who knows what. It depends on the dilution ratio, but it could be 20 gallons, 25 gallons. So that's what we have to keep in mind. So even though it costs us $35 for that quart, it's not costing that for our ready-to-use product. You know, it ends up being pennies per quart for our uh, for our uh, ready-to-use product. So that's what you want to calculate when you're when you're breaking down your supply cost for for every account that you're doing. So on your accounts, what you would do depending depending on how the the chemical is being dispensed or 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 purchased, uh, you know that price. And then if you're uh, you're diluting it down and you're putting it into a five-gallon container or a quart bottle or whatever it is. You can go ahead and do the calculations and know exactly what that one quart ready-to-use product is costing you. So that's what you want to do. And now once you have the one quart, you take a full quart of cleaner and you're starting to clean a location and you just track this. So you, you go through and you do your cleaning and you're seeing, okay, well, I'm going to use a half a bottle, of, uh, a half a quart bottle of this, of this cleaner. Well, calculate your price now and do that for every type of cleaning solution that you may use in the facility. So, so you can break it all down. You know, when you get to your mop heads and things like that there, now your mop heads will last for a period of time. So it, it doesn't matter if you're using a, uh, a standard string mop or, or, you know, a fantail or whatever, uh, your, your standard conventional mop head uh, will last you a long time. So what you do there is just always, you got to track this and sometimes it may take a little while. So let's say your mop head cost you 10 bucks and let's say it lasts you a year. So you just take the $10 divided by 12 uh, so, so you got a monthly price there, and, uh, and then you can uh, go ahead and uh, associate that with your with your cost for the account. So just break down the numbers. That's all you have to do. Uh, you know, so you got your vacuum bags, same thing. Your your cleaning cloths, your microfiber cleaning cloths, your flat mop pads, same thing. You know, uh, you just need to know the cost, how long they last you, and then you're going to be able to break that down and calculate it uh, for that account. Okay. Now generally we know that our, our cleaning supplies will run anywhere from 2 to 10% of the sales. That's, a, that's pretty, pretty common. But uh, what you want to do is, that's why you're going to break it down for each account. Because let's say you have 10 accounts and you've broken this all down, you know exactly what your supply costs are for all 10 accounts. Uh, you total them up, then you divide them by 10, now you know what your average is. So now you take your average, and maybe your average is going to be 2% 2, 2 or 5% or whatever it may be. But at least now you know. So now when you go to calculate a price point for a job or an account that you're, that you're uh, doing a proposal on, you already know that, okay, I know for a fact that my, my supply cost for a general claim is X percent. That's what we're looking for. We've got to know that. Uh, because, again, we're looking, to, we're looking at our, our profit number. That's all we're concerned about. That's what we're in business for. We're in business to make a profit, 
but we have to make sure we know that we are making a profit and how much of a profit we're making. That's, that's why we're doing this whole video on this. Um, so now that's for all for general cleaning, okay? We know that it's uh, 2 to 10% for general cleaning. It's pretty straightforward. But now when we're performing, uh, you know, specialty work or project work, uh, uh, you may see, you know, such as stripping and waxing or uh, floor polishing, um, uh, scrub and recoats, uh, things like that there. Uh, those costs can be higher. Your supply costs will be higher. Because you have to remember when you're doing a scrub and recoat or a strip and wax, uh, it's not necessarily the detergent cleaner or the stripper that we're using because, again, that's a dilutable product. That goes, uh, that goes quite a long ways. But it's the floor finish that we're purchasing that we're reapplying onto the floor. You know, anytime you got a topical coating or, or a coating or a, fin a topical finish, uh, you know, uh, you have to you have to calculate the cost of that. So that's why in those you know, when we're calculating our supply cost for for our specialty work, um, again, price it all out, break it down so you know exactly what it is. So every time you do a strip and wax job or a scrub and recoat, you know exactly that. Okay, here's my average supply cost for this for this type of job. And generally, what what we always do is our, we put down a minimum of four coats of finish, no matter what, it's four coats of finish, uh, unless our client tells us specifically that they only want two or if they want five or whatever it is. But our, our, our policy is four coats of finish. Um, and that's what we do. And, you know, based off of that, we know exactly what our numbers are. Um, so that's why, uh, you know, when you're looking at your supply costs, that's why they're going to be higher when you're doing specialty work like that. Now the other place too where you're going to see higher numbers, you know, well, let me go back, the stripping and waxing, uh, you know, those supply costs, uh, it could be 25, 30% sometimes just because of the cost of the finish. You know, if your finish is uh, costing you 18 to $25 per gallon, depending on what you're purchasing, you know, and what you're laying down, well, that, that, that adds up. So um, anyway, and uh, that's what you want to do there. On the, another uh, area that uh, can get high supply costs is post-construction cleanup. Because now remember that we're, ha we're moving a lot of heavy soils uh, and we may uh, have to clean multiple phases. You know, a typical three-phase cleaning uh, to where you're doing a rough, uh, you know, final and, and a light. Uh, but you have three, three uh, phases there. So in each phase we're going to be using clean solution and, 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 and uh, uh, equipment and, and supplies. So that's why your, your costs will, will get driven up there too. So keep that in mind. So you know, take, it in, take into consideration what you're doing. But uh, that's, what the, that's what you want to do. So there we have it. You know, those are all of our areas uh, that we wanted to cover. You know, we had our, our FICA and Medicare, we got our, our FUDA, we got our SUDA, and then we had our liability insurance, we had our workman's comp, we have overhead, and then supplies. So, you know, by knowing these uh, expense numbers, we're going to be able to calculate what our profit is on any job or any, any account. Um, again, you know, th this stuff isn't really that hard to, to figure it out. Uh, again, when you have workers' comp and taxes and things like that there, uh, use, use the, your, your agents, uh, the people that you're purchasing these products from, you know, have a conversation with them. Uh, you're paying them, so make them work for their money. You know, uh, have them help you calculate exactly what that percentage is and explain it to you how they came to that to that number. Uh, once you do that, you know, then it, then it's uh, something that you know and uh, you can always use. So that's the key. Well, that's it. That's all I have. Uh, hopefully, you guys found this helpful. Uh, and if you did, uh, hit the like button below. And always, if you uh, haven't subscribed to our YouTube uh, channel, go ahead and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and watch for future uh, videos. Uh, we're covering all, all, to uh, you know, all kinds of topics uh, throughout the cleaning industry. So, until next time, thanks.